please click the Black Lives Matter links in the description. It is really important to educate yourself, sign petitions, donate, and vote. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I have clearly dressed up more than the past hundred days, so this is fun for me. Today I'm going to be talking about how the 100 Days of Practice Challenge has revolutionized my playing. Now, in case you've been living under a rock or have not experienced the classical music community on Instagram, there's this tag that people often use, which is the 100 Days of Practice hashtag. Now, this is a challenge that was originally created by Hilary Hahn in 2017 when she wanted to showcase her practice to the world and try to attain consistency in her practicing. So Hilary Hahn was originally inspired by the 100 days hashtag that had been commonly used in the visual arts community on Instagram. It was a hashtag that was meant to show one's progress with their art throughout 100 days. So Hilary Hahn loved the idea of this because it didn't have to be good, it didn't have to be perfect, it didn't have to be complete. It was just showing your process and trying to improve upon it. So she decided that she would take upon the challenge herself and try practicing for 100 days in a row. In case you're wondering where I'm getting all this information from, The Strings Magazine has actually done an interview with Hilary Hahn about her whole 100 days of practice process. I will link the interview in the description if you'd like to check it out. What really got everybody hooked on this hashtag is that they were seeing what it was like for a professional musician to actually be practicing instead of seeing their amazing performance performances that are completely 100% polished. When I was watching Hilary Hahn's videos, I thought it was so interesting to see what kind of things does a professional like this focus on when they're practicing, and how can I implement more of that into my own practice so that I could hopefully be a professional one day myself. Something that Hilary Hahn also mentioned in the interview is that she thinks that this 100 days process could be applied to many different things in regards to music. She mentioned like rosining your bow for 100 days, or practicing etudes for a hundred days, or practicing scales for an hour for a hundred days. There's all sorts of different things that you can do that could help improve your own playing by keeping it consistent and making a habit out of those things. A direct quote from Hilary Hahn, there's a lot of creativity to be found in what represents you and your art for a hundred days. Everybody can take something from it in their own practice. So basically, this is challenging people to practice a hundred days in a row and record short clips of their sessions and post them to social media consistently. Not only does this improve consistency in your practice, but it also gets you involved in the classical music community that is seen on social media. Now, I think this project that Hilary Hahn created was actually the catalyst for the beginning of the classical music community on Instagram. That and Two Set Violin becoming popular at the time. So what about my experience with the 100 days of practice hashtag? Well, I followed Hilary Hahn on my own personal account and I thought that it was really interesting when she started posting her videos. So I was like, hey, if she can do it, why can't I? In late 2017, I created my practice account. Now, I had previous accounts before dedicated to different things that were artistic. I had an art account before, I had a photography account before. I loved creating Instagram accounts, but I thought that creating a violin account would be something special and would actually help me get a lot more serious about violin. At the time I had started my account, I had been playing violin for roughly four years and I really wanted to improve and get into this dream high school of mine. So I started the 100 days at the end of 2017. It was maybe October, November when I started and I was really excited because it was a challenge that a lot of people were starting to take on on Instagram. At the end of the year, I was like, yay, 100 days. But then I was like, there's an opportunity for me to do more than 100 days. The new year is about to roll around it's about to be January 1st and I could be practicing for a whole year rather than just a hundred days now I thought I had already been practicing fairly consistently so I thought that I could do more than a hundred days when I did the hundred days challenge I had maybe gotten through 25 days of it the initial problem with that challenge and me is that I would miss days and then the next day after the day I missed would have the same day number as the day I missed would have had so in about 60 days I would get 30 days of practice written down. I would have days lining up to 30. I thought it was still helpful to me because putting myself in that challenge mindset was like, oh, I have to practice, I have to practice. And if I missed a day, I was like, oh, I gotta do the next day, I've gotta get back on it. Even though I didn't do consecutive days, I wanted to complete the challenge and have the 100 days. At the very end of 2017, I wanted to start something different. I wanted to start anew. I had already butchered the 100 days of practice challenge. I wanted to create a challenge of my own that was more measurable and a little bit harder on myself. I started through 365 days of practice challenge where you would practice for an entire year daily and consecutively. I did this for the entire year of 2018 and I still had some struggles with missing a few days but I actually was very consistent and on days that I didn't 
post, I would post like a few days later and just have like all five videos that I missed in one post. Recording myself and critiquing what was going on in my playing that I didn't like was also really helpful and it helped me improve really fast. In about March or April of 2018, I had gotten into the dream school that I was really hoping I would get into. I also got a job that summer, which made practicing a lot harder because I was at a job for a lot of the day. Despite having this all-encompassing job, I still practiced really late at night, which I know is bad for you, but I really wanted to keep myself consistent. I think it was really good looking back because it showed that I was really determined to continue, and I think that determination is exactly what you need to get serious about violin. So 2018 was obviously a really great year. I had achieved so much, and I was so happy with my progress. 2019 rolled around, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> but with 2019, I wanted to do it slightly different. I wanted to do at least an hour every day rather than just practicing every day. Now, I admit I fell off of this train pretty quickly because an hour a day is a lot sometimes. If you have a really, really busy day and you have an exam the next day or you just took an exam and you have one tomorrow, it can be really difficult to continue practicing despite everything else that's going on in your life for an entire hour. So I fell off the hour thing, but I did something in 2019 that wasn't really successful when I did it in 2018. So I created this practice chart in 2018 because I wanted to keep note of how many hours I was practicing each day and start noticing trends between my practice time. Now I had gotten maybe three months into 2018 and I fell off the wagon because it was just too much to keep track of for me. Filling in every single square for each day was just a tedious process that I didn't really enjoy doing even though it's something so small. But in 2018 I wanted to be really serious about it and I wanted to actually write down those hours because I wanted to notice the trends and and see if there's something I could do to improve the consistency of my play. I wanted to keep this chart right here so that you could see it while I'm talking. A really interesting thing that I noticed in this chart is that I would have motivation for a period of one or two weeks. You would see a lot darker squares for those weeks where I felt a lot of motivation and I think that that's really interesting to notice how motivation comes in waves like that. And then you'd see dry spells where I'd practice for an hour or less and that's shown by the yellow and apricot colors which means I still practiced but I just didn't do it very much those days and motivation was kind of low for me. Now you may see there's about 10 days in this chart that aren't filled in at all. They're completely white bubbles. And that's because I didn't practice those days. I'll be honest, I didn't practice. And whether it was because of laziness, whether it was because I was busy with something, whether if there was an emergency or a vacation, I didn't practice those days. And honestly, 10 days? That's not a lot. I'm really proud of that. I think that you need to have a break every once in a while. When you actually do have a really busy day or you have a vacation, you need to be able to take certain days off because you don't want to crowd your life and make playing violin a chore for you. Another thing that I noticed in this chart is that I had to make modifications. I added the greater than zero option because I wanted to be able to have days where I would only practice 30 minutes or 15 minutes because it's better than nothing and I wanted to show that I actually put a little bit of effort instead of no effort. And keep in mind, I was posting this chart on my Instagram story every day I would update it. Sometimes it wouldn't be every day, sometimes it would be like once a week I would put all the squares within one post. What resulted from this posting my hours on social media is I didn't want to have dry spells where I didn't do anything. It would make me feel really bad about myself and I didn't want other people seeing that I wasn't trying. Now this public shaming of sorts, even though it wasn't that bad, it made me want to practice more. Seeing other people that also use this graphic motivated me to practice more because I wanted to show that I wasn't lazy and honestly that worked for me that helped keep me consistent 2019 was an amazing year because it really showed that this challenge worked for me my playing was improving really really rapidly and I'd gotten into a lot of summer programs that I was really excited about and never thought I could get into now 2020 the year that just shakes everything up. I broke the chain and I was like, I'm not gonna do a practice challenge this year. I've already worked hard enough the past two and a half years and I think I need a break. And to be honest, a lot of people were telling me that I needed to take a break. So I was like, you know, maybe I deserve a little bit of a break. And not a break as in I don't practice, but a break as in I don't show the world how much I'm practicing every single day and a video of myself practicing every single day. And it was nice for a little while, but I noticed that I started practicing less frequently and I didn't like that. Luckily, 
my teacher held me somewhat accountable and would give us charts to fill out for every day's practice and she would review them at every lesson. So that still kept me quite consistent. But as soon as school closed and we didn't necessarily have those charts anymore, I fell off the bandwagon a little bit. I would go maybe two, three, four days without practicing and I know that's terrible and it sucks and I'm really mad at myself for letting myself do that. The reason I thought this way was because I was in the mindset that during quarantine there's always somebody that's working harder than me and progressing more than me and that made me feel guilty for taking time off but know that you don't have to be always making progress during quarantine it's totally okay to take time off and I think I'm still in that old mindset and I need to break out of it but I needed a little bit of a break at some point and I've been practicing consistently for two and a half years and I was like I need some time off this lack of practicing was also facilitated by COVID-19 which took away all of my motivation in every single concert I had been working towards and that made me really frustrated because I was like I'm not improving as much as I used to and I just feel like I'm bad all the time. <laughs> I was still posting videos but it was somewhat irregular. It, I'd maybe post once or twice a week. I realized that I was getting nowhere by doing no practice and although a break was nice I had taken way too much advantage of that. So a few days ago I decided that I would start the 100 days of practice challenge once more. I think it's kind of funny. It comes full circle because I'm doing the challenge that I started my account doing three years ago when I started this whole thing I sounded way worse than I sound now and that's a good thing because that means that these challenges have helped me improve so much so here I am doing this new practice challenge so now I want to share a few things that I learned from doing these practice challenges all these years and why you should try to do one too so one of the things that I pretty much noticed right away when I joined Instagram as a violin account there's a great classical music community that lives on Instagram and that primarily started with Hilary Hahn and Two Set back in 2017 and it's even bigger now and it's so cool because everybody supports each other. It's become its own sector of Instagram itself and I think that that's the coolest thing. There's a way for people to share their thoughts on classical music and in their training no matter what level they are. Through this community I actually made a lot of friends over time. I think that the friends that I made through this experience is really valuable because you make a lot of friends going to like summer programs and stuff that are somewhat national, international, but when you talk to each other online and send supporting comments on each other's posts. It just really helps create that community and create that bond through somebody over the internet. When people put their playing on the internet, they're automatically in a vulnerable place and they put themselves out there with hopes that nobody's gonna say bad things about their playing or critique them too hard. And I think that that vulnerability helps create that community because everybody is sharing something about themselves that they may not feel 100% perfect at and that's okay. This has turned into me talking about how great the music community is, but Instagram has turned into a place where people only post the perfect parts of themselves and it's just turned into this superficial thing. This classical music community completely breaks those boundaries because these musicians are posting videos of their practice and their process, their progress, not necessarily perfect performance videos all the time. Now with this vulnerability and putting yourself on the internet, you become a lot more disciplined in your practice. You also become a lot more consistent because you're taking on this challenge. You want to successfully complete that challenge and show other people your progress in your playing. This really increases your discipline with your own own playing and also helps to be a lot more consistent because you're putting these things out online. I noticed that after about a year of being on Instagram and doing these daily challenges is that I was actually improving really really fast on violin more than I had before and that made me really happy because that led me to more opportunities. There are other challenges that became a subset of this challenge. There's the 10,000 hours of practice challenge, there's the one take challenge, there's of course the 365 days challenge and I think that all of these challenges are great subsets because they're different ways that people have a adapted this certain amount of hours or days challenge to whatever they want to improve in their practice. The 10,000 hours challenge is based on the principle that you need to practice something for 10,000 hours in order to become a master at it. Now this ensues that those 10,000 hours are focused and productive and they're not mindless practicing. The one take challenge is one that I actually did for a while and it doesn't have any sort of time period to it. The premise of the challenge is for every practice session you take one take and you post that take. That shows an increased amount of vulnerability because you prepare more for that take and it almost feels more like a performance. If you mess up, you gotta post it or else it's not one take challenge. So I think that was a really helpful thing because in the beginning I would take a hundred different videos of myself playing to get just the perfect take and that took like sometimes 30 minutes to an hour just to get like a one minute video for Instagram and that's ridiculous. I took on the one take challenge which really helped me take a lot less takes and be more realistic about my playing towards my Instagram. It was a lot less effort on the recording part and more effort in actually preparing for the recording which is what you should be doing in your practice anyways is preparing for a performance. So anyway 
anyways, I really encourage you to take on this challenge if you're interested in it. It is super helpful to improve your playing and is the perfect thing to get more serious about a certain instrument. I definitely gained a lot out of this challenge. If you're interested in following my process with the 100 Days of Practice Challenge once again, you can go follow my Instagram right here. It's Julia Jacobson Violin. I'm hopefully going to be posting daily since I'm taking on this new challenge. If you'd like to join me in the challenge, all you have to do is start marking your days and posting videos daily with the hashtag 100 Days of Practice. And if you're watching this during quarantine, COVID-19, 2020 stuff, it's the perfect time to take on a challenge like this because if you're also feeling unmotivated like me, it's a good way to motivate yourself towards a recording and become more consistent in your practicing. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I post videos weekly. Leave a comment with your experiences with these challenges, whether you're in the process of them, have completed them, want to do one. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. I have to take my brother to piano lessons. <laughs>